everyone, welcome back to John Florio channel. I am Mary and I am an expert on John Florio. In my last video I talked about Giordano Bruno's years at Oxford and how his revolutionary ideas created a chaos in the university and how he was later banished and why John Florio decided to follow Bruno and they both went at the French embassy in London. I have explained in my past videos how Shakespeare mentions Bruno's art of memory in his plays, especially in Hamlet. Today I want to show you how Shakespeare also embraced Bruno's thesis upon the infinite universe and what's so unique about Shakespeare, because unlike his contemporaries, so other English writers, Shakespeare decided to follow Bruno's thesis and to share Bruno's vision upon the world through his plays. But before we start, don't forget to like this video, to subscribe, let me know in the comments if you have questions, and now let's start. I have explained in my last video how Bruno at Oxford shared his vision upon the infinite universe and the heliocentric theory. So the Earth was not at the center of the universe, but the Sun was at the center of the universe and the universe was not finite, but infinite. So for Bruno, the universe has no borders or limits. The Sun is just another star the stars are other suns, infinite in number and in extent, with an infinite of words. In the universe there is neither up nor down, right nor left, but all is relative, for there is no center. All is turning and in motion, for endless vicissitude and motion is the principle of life. So where do we find Bruno's infinite universe in Shakespeare? Oh God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I have bad dreams. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty in form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet, to me, what is this? Quintessence of dust. Moreover, for Bruno, the stars are made of fire and other elements of this world. And guess what? Shakespeare thought the same. Doubt thou the stars are fire? Doubt the sun doth move? Doubt truth to be a liar? But never doubt I love. Shakespeare makes specific detailed references to Bruno's ideas upon the infinite universe, stars and mankind. But it has been also suggested that Shakespeare was generally influenced by other scientists and astronomers. These are Tycho Brahe and Thomas Digges. For example, Digges too followed Copernicus' theory like Bruno did, and for this reason it has been suggested that Shakespeare probably followed Digges and not Bruno. Why? Because it is more complicated to explain how Shakespeare read Bruno. This is why it is easier to find references on Digges in Shakespeare's works than Bruno. So Digges agreed with Copernicus' theory, but his infinite universe was spherical, therefore bounded hands not infinite. What's more significant, however, is that Digis stars remain quintessential stars, that is, they were not of this world and not made of the same substance and material as the Earth, Sun and planets. Bruno's were. So for Digis, the universe was not really infinite and the stars are not made of this world Therefore, there is a huge difference between Digis and Bruno. 
and Shakespeare follow Bruno, not Diggis. Although he most certainly heard about Diggis, or maybe he personally knew him, Shakespeare in the end followed Bruno. Fico Brahe is another scientist that is frequently mentioned as a reference that Shakespeare makes in Hamlet. Why? Danish court astrologer Brahe was the first and greatest astronomer of the age. He spent his life working obsessively day and night in his observatory, Uraniburg, on an island off the coast of Denmark, a grant from the Danish king, whose nearby castle, Helsingor, he is echoed in Hamlet, Helsingor. And yet, with the entire treasury of Denmark and every instrument known to science at his disposal, Brahe never accepted even Copernicus. So Brahe and Bruno had very different ideas on the universe. Instead, Brahe developed a convoluted world view to keep the Earth at the center. Sun and Moon revolved around the Earth while the five known planets kept a solitary trajectory and revolved around the Sun. Strange indeed. Stranger still, a portrait of Tycho Brahe shows the famous astronomer framed by a stone portal. On either side of the portal, heraldic shields bear the names of Brahe ancestors, Harry Rosencrantz and Sophie Gilderson. Men like Brahe and Digges were welcome in England. They held prestigious positions among the intellectuals of the time. Bruno was banished, he was considered heretical, mad, and Shakespeare couldn't make plain and clear references to his works, to his ideas. He couldn't make a clear and explicit reference to someone that everyone hated in England. But as I have shown you, if you understand Bruno, his ideas and his works, it is pretty clear that Shakespeare makes detailed references to his works, to his ideas, and especially in Hamlet. In the end, Shakespeare always chooses Bruno his art of memory, his ideas upon the infinite universe and his ideas of mankind, in which we become a small part of a much larger whole, in which our life suddenly changes. Why? How Shakespeare in Hamlet represent Bruno's new idea of mankind. Bruno believed that he was born to carry out a mission, a philosophical task in this sense. He felt himself as an angel arrived on the earth to bring the truth among common people. He had a high self-esteem and he wrote, One man, although alone, can and will win the race and in the end he will be victorious and triumph over the general ignorance. Where do we see this vision in Hamlet? Hamlet too was alone, in a world that he increasingly perceives in its madness as out of joint, and that's why he will exclaim, The time is out of joint. Oh cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. Bruno's madness reflects Hamlet's madness. Why? Because they are both men who are considered mad in a corrupted world they want to change. This is why Hamlet is the embodiment of Bruno's philosophy, of those ideas for which Bruno was banished and later died, when in fact, in the last moments of his life, Bruno was invited to abjure on the infinite universe, on the immortality of the soul, on the stars. He refused to abjure by saying, I have nothing to regret, I will not change my mind. And before dying he say these words, perhaps you pronounce this sentence against me with greater fear than I receive it. Stay resolute. Bye.